The longer version of the Cyberpunk 2077 trailer is out, so I thought today we'd do a deep dive into that. You see, I know Night City better than I know my own Mr. Stud slash Cybersnake genital implant. I've spent a very large amount of time playing around in Night City and I still have the source book. Now I don't know how they will have changed things moving from 2020 to 2077. In an interview they hinted that certain characters from 2020 would appear. I'm not quite sure that how that's going to happen unless immortality has been worked out or they appear as AIs or full body conversions or something, but that's what they say. And looking at the video, what we can see of it, it does seem like a lot of the locations and so on remain the same. I guess a city doesn't change that much in 50 years. I don't know whether they've altered the timeline, shifted it forward, how much of the original background they're keeping, but from the video it does seem that Night City is pretty much intact. And we haven't seen much of the gameplay, hard to know what else is, is going on. But let's go through this with a fine tooth comb and see what we can discover together about the new Night City. So without any further ado, enhance. The first thing we see as we enter the trailer is the Night City Metro map, and it pretty much seems to be correct. It seems to map to what we know from the book. Most of the areas, at least the ones we can read, seem to be familiar. Now, Cyberpunk 2013, the original edition, came out in 1988, and the Night City sourcebook came out in 1991. So a lot of uh, assumptions and so on that were made about the background will probably have to have been changed, but by and large, so far, this seems to map pretty well to the book. Now, Night City is built on top of and around what is currently Morrow Bay. That's between Los Angeles and San Francisco, closer to San Diego. In the original timeline and background, Night City was founded in 1994. It was a personal project, a new city designed by Richard Knight, whose name is loaned to the city itself, and it was backed by three mega corporations, Euro Business Machines, Arasaka and Petrochem. So right from the get-go, it is an expression of the absolute avarice of corporations which we see in most dystopian cyberpunk fiction. In the original game, there has been a collapse in the United States, with various states going independent and some of them splitting up, California being one of them, dividing itself between North California, NorCal, and South California, SoCal. There's a successionist movement at the moment, so whether they've shifted that to make it the coastal and inland instead, well, that remains to be seen. The districts here go beyond Central Night City, which suggests that they're creating a much larger play area, and this has also given them arenas which are much less well defined. Westbrook, which we can see defined legibly on the map, is a fortress which is built on the naturally occurring hills that overlook Night City from across the bay. This is where the corporate rich tend to live, or lived in 2020 at least, and they spend a lot of money to make sure that nobody messes with them. It's essentially a gated corporate community with massively heavy security. Haywood is also legible, and that's a light industrial area on the east of the Del Coronado Bay. There you'll find things like the Arasaka Weapon Assembly Plant, Biotechnia's monoclonal research station, EBM's remote assembly facility, and the Militech Armored Assault Group training and live fire range. So that suggests there may well be some corporate shenanigans going on, if you can visit these areas, of course. Now what's interesting is that Watson, which is labeled here, and Santo Domingo, which is labeled here, are not areas that are familiar or defined within the original Night City sourcebook. Given that I doubt this maglev train runs all the way to the Dominican Republic, I expect this is a different Santo Domingo, and as to what Watson is, I don't know. Some new extension of the city, perhaps. Now if you look up into the background as the protagonist begins to move up the train, which is probably the NCART Transit Metro system, you'll see the list of stops in red at the back. 
Now this suggests he's travelling in from southern Night City, south Night City, which is a relatively undefined area, towards the centre. We can't see exactly which stop he has, but it does seem that they've expanded the metro. New Harbour, there is the New Harbour Mallplex, Med Centre is the Med Centre, and then there was Chinatown and Old Town, but unfortunately the next stop was illegible. But they do seem to have extended the metro, so there will be more areas than in the original book where you can travel. And gangs were a big talking point issue in the 80s and the 90s, and I'd expect them to feature prominently in Cyberpunk 2077. Here we can see an unfortunate Sarari man being harassed by two possible gang members. If I had to pin them as anything, I'd pin them as members of the Black Queen's gang. But it seems unlikely to me that many gangs from 2020 would survive to 2077. But then again, the Crips were founded in 1969 and will be celebrating their 50th anniversary next year. Despite what we can see inside the train, it's a bit difficult to figure out exactly where he's travelling in from. The view here doesn't seem quite right. He seems to be travelling in from the east towards the corporate centre if the Arasaka symbol on that building is anything to go by. And if it is, then a lot of liberties have been taken <laughs> with skyscrapers and so forth. It's very hard to tell quite where this scene is taking place, but if I had to hazard a guess, it would be either the Med Center or the Little China Police Station. If I had to choose between the two, I reckon I would say the Med Center District, where the police precinct is part of the Municipal Criminal Justice Complex, or Mungjuk. A lot of what we see may well be taking place in what was called the combat zone in the original game. This was much more of a free fire area in the, in the tabletop game and it was relatively undefined which means they've got a lot of playground to work with. Areas may also have been reclaimed. These later images seem to show some sort of projects or mass housing for the less well to do in Night City without necessarily being a full-on combat zone. There's also an outside chance, given the sheer implied scale, that this is actually the Pacifica Arcology fallen onto hard times and repurposed as a slum. That could be incredibly interesting if it is how they've taken things. Corporations are, of course, a huge part of any cyberpunk dystopia, and this appears to suggest corporate wheeling, dealing, and under-the-table shenanigans. Low profile but highly fashionable implants are more common amongst corporates and that's kind of suggestive that they're getting some kind of constant updated data. We get to see a bit of a slice of life, fashion, children playing computer games and then we get this woman landing in this clearly much more highly advanced AV vehicle compared to the AV4s and AV6s of the 2020 game and I'm fairly certain given the line of trees and the view which is back towards the corporate centre that she's landing in Japantown. The nod of the head on the guard just makes it that little bit more certain. Through the 80s and into the 90s, people were quite paranoid about Japan kind of economically taking over the world, and you saw that reflected in a lot of the cyberpunk fiction of the time, and this has been held to throughout films. Whether they've done that here, or whether they've shifted to more of a view as China being the, the big economic threat to the West remains to be seen, but I hope they retain some of the Japanese stylistic influences, at least. Full cybernetic conversion seem to be much more common, despite the poverty that seems to be displayed in most places. Now this bar, I think it's the Night Owl, which is the only bar that stays open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, day in, day out, in Night City. I think it's meant to be that one, which is a kind of classy upmarket bar known for its pool tables and for stocking real beer, but part of me hopes it's the Forlorn Hope, which is a combat zone bar frequented by real hard nuts and tough cases. It would be interesting if it was that, but that wasn't detailed as part of Night City until a later supplement, and may even have been a third party one, so it's probably the Night Owl. One thing my daddy told me before he left this shitty world, don't play Shadowrun. This is going to seem like an incredibly niggly nitpick, but the cabs 
in Cyberpunk, in Night City, are supposed to be red and supposed to be covered in mock Soviet regalia. Red Cab is the local company. Of course, the Soviet Union still existed, at least for a year after this was written, and in Cyberpunk, in the original background, the Soviet Union is still going strong. Weapons tend to be a big part of any RPG, and Cyberpunk is no exception, quite the opposite. Weapons are very important, weapon customization is very important. The weapon we see here isn't familiar, we would expect to see new weapons in 2077 I'm sure, I hope a few of the classics do still show up, like the 666 Hellbringer, love that gun. This looks like it might well be an energy weapon of some kind, or perhaps a, a railgun, which would make a very good sniper rifle. Drones and remotes weren't a big part of Cyberpunk 2013 or 2020, the concept of drones, the executability of drones that we've seen today wasn't really present, so it makes sense to bring in more drone technology and robots. They did show up more in Cyber Generation, which to me was a far better spiritual successor to Cyberpunk 2020 than the Doll Edition which we don't talk about. This will probably seem like a minor pointless detail to a lot of people, uh, but the Chromebook 1 cover, I'm not sure whether it was actually done by Hajime Soriyama, whether it was an homage to, to Soriyama, but he's renowned for these chrome sexy robots, robot sexy <laughs> images that he does, it's exquisite airbrush art that was clearly quite influential on, on Cyberpunk and that whole aesthetic at the time, and to see this chromed woman in the pink very much another homage to Soriyama, just fills my heart with joy. Rednecks with shotguns probably means two things. One, that we are going to see nomads, who are more kind of low-tech wanderers, bike gangs, troops of mobile homes, and also, this guy I think, I think he has a problem with cybernetics, and that's probably an EMP weapon designed to take them out. So you're gonna face cyber racists. Now we know you're going to get customizable characters and you're not going to be locked into any one particular character role. And this has some implications regarding computer hacking. A lot of problems that Cyberpunk and Shadowrun... <laughs> problems that they had were when one player would go off and hack into systems and the others would be laying around doing nothing while they dealt with that. This isn't a problem in a single player game, but you really had to be a specialist to be a truly effective hacker or netrunner. We can see people being killed by hostile programs, we can see people jacking in, all of this. It's a question to see how that will balance with the rest of the game and how essential it is and whether they do actually incorporate full-on hacking and assaulting data fortresses and virtuality into the game. It will be missing a big element if they didn't include it, but it might be jarring and difficult to include. We get to see a bit of street level life here, and I do hope that they manage to make Night City feel alive, and yeah, you don't want to fuck with vendors. We also saw a very brief flash there of what I think is an eyeball being installed or uninstalled by a backstreet medical technician or a ripper doc. So hopefully that side of things, the, the underworld, the black market, will definitely be part of the game. Earlier on, you saw some medical technicians resuscitating a, a body on the ground, and then in this scene, the aerial vehicle, the AV, that you see assaulting what appears to be a ripper gang from inside the combat zone, that's also a medical vehicle. Trauma team are a private paramilitary paramedical team that will come in and rescue you and resuscitate you if you're gunned down in a, in a fight. So if you're able to get that medical insurance in this game and it's a way of you being recovered, retrieved and brought back to life almost uh, if, if you die, that will be an interesting method of respawning people and charging them a shitload of money. There's more that can be gleaned from this trailer. Many of the corporations, the brands and so on that you see are original to the game. Kiroshi Cyber Optics, for example. But my hopes are very high for this game, incredibly stellar. After The Witcher, CD Projekt Red has a lot to live up to.